in the backyard machine shop. Well, a few videos ago, I mentioned that I bought a lathe that really shouldn't have. And uh, well, here's the lathe. It's a uh, it's a early 19th or early 20th century Pratt and Whitney 16 inch engine lathe. Uh, and putting a date of birth on it, it's going to be somewhere between 1909 and 1912. Uh, Maybe 1915, give or take a few years, a couple years. But and the reason I can state that is that in, here on the um, tag, it's got a patent date of 1909. So I know it was after 1909, and I found it in a 1912 Pratt and Whitney catalog. So it was still around in 1912. So uh, like I said, somewhere in that neighborhood is is when this lathe was built. Uh, it's really nice lathe. The way I come about getting this lathe was a friend of mine called me back in November and said, hey man, I got this old lathe in the shop. We're shutting the shop down and um, we know that you do restorations and you like to save old equipment and it's the last thing left in the shop and, and would you like to get it? And I said, you know, I'll come look at it. And so I did. I went over, it took me a couple months to get by there, but I went over and looked at it and when I did, I kind of fell in love with it. It's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of unusual characteristics about it. And a lot of, uh, at the time, probably were cutting edge details that they put on lathes that we still don't see it today. And, and, and there's probably reasons why. But uh, at the time, it was probably a selling point to, uh, to, the, to the customers. And um, I'll go over some of that with you. Well, anyway, back to the lathe. This model number, or serial number 748, it's Pratt & Whitney, 16 inch. Cone head um, is actually probably originally sh uh, line shaft driven, but I have a Lima or Lima, however you want to pronounce it, uh, drive to go with, four speed drive. Uh, I mean, the lady, honestly, I've been going over it this morning, looking at it, cleaning it up a little bit, and it's in as good a shape, or if not better shape, than my newer lathes. Uh, and, and that's hard to say, but. When I got it, it looked all, all rusty, but somebody had coated it really good with oil, and the oil just kind of dried on it over the years, and the dust, and um, I just come in and started wiping the stuff off, and, and it is remarkable how, how clean it is. Uh, it works nice, everything is nice and smooth on it. Uh, it's got a cool compound, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, it's got a, a 10 inch chuck, like I said, cone head, got back gears, it's got a taper attachment, uh, it's got a relieving attachment, it's got a uh, quick change gearbox, uh, tool tray, it's got these cool brass oars on the top. I mean, the tail stock, everything, like I said, everything works perfect. Uh, steady rest, and they come with a lot of the options that, that came with this, with this lathe. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move you in, and we're going to look over it in a little bit. And, um, and I'll show you some of the cool little details that it, this lathe has. Alright guys, I got you tuned in here to the, uh, to the compound. And one of the cool things about this compound, one, it's so big. I mean, it's got a nice base to sit on. It's got a, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what it's for. I guess it's to tilt your, your angle on your tool bits. Um, anyway, it releases. As you can tell, i still got an original wrench. And the, and, the, and the compound will actually, the, the tool post will actually tilt to an angle. Uh, like I said, we got the original wrench. Got a nice lock. It, it, it works nice and smooth. Uh, got a great, a great uh, tractor down here. I just got one side here tightened. I mean, everything's moved. I mean, there's no slop whatsoever in this, in this lathe. Uh, cross speed has very minimal slop. Uh, it works nice and smooth. You can still see all the, the scraping marks and everything in the compound. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to try to show you is one of, the, one of what I would call the cutting edges of technologies of this day uh, is this little gadget right here. And what this is, all right, let me, let me try to demonstrate. Typically when you thread on a lathe like this, you set your compound at 29 and a half degrees, uh, 
such as zero on your, on your, guy, on your gauge, such as zero on your cross feed. Come in and you make your first pass. So you pull all the way down, and then you back out, and you go down, feed back into your zero, and uh, advance on your compound, cut your, cut your thread. Well, this little lathe has got a little gadget right here that allows you to uh, feed down and then pull this little lever. That's kind of a little, it's still a little stiff. But what this lever does is it pulls out your tool bit and lets you go back down. Now, there's no thread dial on this thing, and I can see it's a good use for it because you won't have to reverse your, your, your feed and come back down to keep it everything time. Uh, and then you just take it, push it back in, advance your nut, and go. Another cool thing, it's got these uh, micro stops here that you can adjust how far you want it to come back uh, when you bring it back. So all this is, this is, like I said, this is probably cutting edge technology back in, um, in 1912. Uh, to, I still would probably come back and, and do my do it because that's the way I've, I've always done things. That's the way I was taught, and it would this I wouldn't I probably wouldn't use it, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, we got adjustment there. Uh, it's got a taper attachment, and uh, it's got clutch wheels for feeds. We've got a half nut here. Look at that, it fell right in place. You know, it doesn't have a thread dial, so I might have to take and figure out how to make me a thread dial and put on it. If I ever decide to thread. Okay. All right, got you over here at the tail stock. Uh, let's back off it a little bit, raise up here. All right, tail stock. Uh, again, everything works nice and smooth on it. Uh, got a number 10 jar no tape. So I've got a center for it. That's about all I have. Got the lock on the back, lock here, and uh, like I said, everything works great on it. It's nice and smooth. It'll run all the way out. Uh, still have the little, the little uh, oiler for your center. So that just tells me whoever had this really took care of. It. Again, it's 100 years old, and little things like this get lost. That's the first things that get lost on these blades. So tail stops in good shape. Uh, We have, the, we have the steady rest, it's the original steady rest, um, it's just sitting on there right now. I mean, it's, it's a steady rest, I think it's got like 5 inch capacity. Alright guys, here's one of the things that I thought was cool. Look at these waves. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but you can still see all the flaking all the, from all the scraping that was done. Now this is the end that doesn't get a lot of wear, so that's the end that's going to be the last, you know, to get worn off. But the amount of flaking that's in here still shows that, that uh, the blade was taken care of. It's not worn completely out. Uh, there's still some on the headstock in too, but we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, okay. Here we are at the headstock end. Uh, we've got a nice, a nice, uh, uh, cone head uh, with the, uh, the big step pulley in it. I mean, it turns nice and smooth. I checked it, it's got about three thousandths clay in it. I took a, a, a two before and put up under the indicator on the top, and I can move it about three thousandths, which is probably about where it should be. Um, and like I said, it turns nice and smooth. And uh, here's your selector, engages and disengages your feeds. So now we're turning our feed screws, if you can see that. Disconnect that. We have our shift lever for our quick change gearbox. And uh, shifts it from our it feeds from, from one speed to the other. Uh, like I said, we have nice brass oil caps. We have a back gear and a back gear lever back here. To, it's the same it's kind of setup as most. Engages and disengages your back gear. We have uh, probably 50 
different oil cups on it. Uh, maybe even more than that. Maybe over a hundred on here. We can get into that gear train. Up here is your shift lever. This selects forward and reverse or counter or on your gear train. Yeah, um, this is a threaded spindle, so you don't reverse your spindle. So what you can do is you can reverse your gear train and make it and feed out or in, left and right. So um, that about covers them. We'll back you up. We're gonna go look back and look at some of the options that it came with. You hold on one second. I'll reset up the cameras. All right, guys. We're over here at the table. What we're doing is we're gonna look at some of the options that uh, came with, or some of the accessories that came with this Pratt and Whitney uh, 16 inch lathe. Um, one here is the uh, the relieving attachment, and um, basically what this allows you to do is it allow you to cut gears and hobs, uh, reamers, uh, things of that nature, and, and basically how it works, it's got a, a set of cams in here that pull, it's like a tracer attachment. They pull back on the tool post, tool, and relieve the cut, and then come back in, and, and, and it hooks up to you. You have a gear train on the back of the, uh, on the back of the lathe, and this hooks up and it turns it, and, uh, and it's time, just like chasing threads. So here's the, the, the main part of the relieving attachment. And this was patented in 1902 by Pratt & Whitney, so uh, it's been around a while. Um, and here's a set of the gears. Well, it's just like I said, just like threading, you have a certain gear, gear set up to do certain release, certain um, pitches. You have uh, multiple cams, like this is a, uh, a, uh, a 60 thousandths rise double. Here's a 60 thousandths rise triple. Here's a, a 60 thousandths rise single. Ooh, it's getting hot here. Anyway, along with this, we also have a set of, uh, of Pratt & Whitney collets. We have them up from 3 8 all the way up to an inch and 3 8 um, I cleaned these up. They looked like they were in bad shape when I got them, but a little scotch bright and, uh, and some vinegar, and they cleaned right up. There was hardly any rust on any of this stuff. Most of it, like I said, had been coated in, in oil and dirt from sitting in a shop, and it kind of preserved it. So uh, everything's in great shape. There's a couple of them that's been hit in the past. So we also have the draw bar. Uh, the draw bar needs to be cleaned up and uh, needs a new handle put on it. It had a, like a wood handle on it. So, all right, if you hold on one second, I'll show you the drive system and um, I'll bring that over here and we'll look at it for a minute. All right, guys, here we are over at our, uh, at our drive. And uh, basically it's a, it's a Lima electric motor with a gearbox. It's got a four speed gearbox. Uh, Four ratios, 4.15 to 1, 3.15 to 1, 1.85 to 1, and 1 to 1. Okay, so this allows us, this is mounted on the, um, on the machine. And I'm not sure if this is like a, set, a setup that you bought or if it was built. Anyway, it looks like a good setup. I'm going to do some work on it. I'm going to rebuild the whole the gearbox and the motor. Go through and put new bearings in it. Um, it's got the original step pulley here that goes with the lathe, matches up. What I might do, what I thought about doing is, uh, is hanging this from the ceiling somehow if I can find the hangers, but that's, that's far and beyond. Right now, this is what I got. Uh, the gear setup, what I've calculated out, will give you pretty much the standard gears. The, the, the speeds that you need with the lathe, so it seems like it'll work fine. And, I, and it's, it's pretty well built. The only problem I have is bolting it to the to the castings on the lathe and making sure they're strong enough. So, all right, there you have it. 1912, at least that's what I'm calling it. it could be a couple years newer, a couple years older. 1912 Pratt & Whitney engine lathe. Um, I plan on doing a at least a, a uh, a new paint job on it, clean it up, 
take it apart and do that and, and cover that in some video. Um, it's probably going to be a couple of months, so I got to uh, I got a couple of projects I got to do in here. Then I got to um, I'm going to have to switch my shop around. Um, I've got two more machines that's coming in, and I don't have anywhere to put them. So right now here in the machine shop, I got about 800 square feet, and it's pretty much tied up. I've got one, two, three lathes, two milling machines, and the fourth lathe, uh, three or four grinders. And it's pretty packed in here, so we're going to uh, we're going to move some things around. I'm basically, my cabinet shop is like 12, 1400 square feet. This shop's about 800, um, and I'm probably going to switch them around. This is probably going to end up being a wood shop. Also, I got to come in here and put a ceiling in, put some insulation in, where I can get some air conditioning in here, where I can I can live during the summertime, and some heat in here, where I can um, protect these machines from rusting during the wintertime. Anyway, back to the lathe. Uh, you'll see it in some upcoming videos, um, restoration process, or I mean, I'm funny. It's funny calling it restoration sometimes. I'm not going to go in and grind the ways or or anything like that. So I don't know how. I mean, how close to a restoration it is. It's going to be a clean up, paint, put back in service type deal. Right now, if it wasn't for the fact that I had two lays, I'd use it just like it is. I mean, it's actually in better shape. Than, a lathe, than, than my Monarch, and probably is in good a shape as the Kingston, and it's only a few years old. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're going to enjoy the upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed some of my other videos. Um, so until next time from the Backyard Machine Shop, so long.